How has your week been going? Last week, I was out riding my bike in shorts. And yesterday, well, this happened. And today, this. This is not what I had planned. How about you? Things going to plan, or would you rather snooze? Stay in bed until spring really arrives. At least once a week, we crawl out of bed and not only face the day, but embrace it. At least once a week, we let go of our expectations and awake to the presence of God in the world. However we experience or express the Holy Other, we open ourselves up. Sometimes there's a parade. Sometimes it's a little more subtle. But every time we awaken and discover that we are not alone. Hallelujah. We call that worship, and you are welcome to join us. Welcome to worship with Jubilee United Church.
good news? Well, if you were hoping for one more chance to toboggan this season, I suppose this is good news. But we have even better news. Do you remember when we baptized Christopher Petrie? Well, he now has a little sister. Will and Christine brought their new daughter into the world just two weeks ago on Sunday, March the 10th. Her name is Emily Allison Petrie, and she is great news. Welcome to the Jubilee community and our digital Sunday service. The themes and the scripture are very similar to the Jubilee in-person service, but this service is created specifically for you, our digital community. You are unique, and together with the in-person community, we are all Jubilee. Whether you connect digitally all the time or some of the time, join us in person often, once in a while, or, or never, you belong. You help to determine who we are and how we do things. You are the people who share what we do with friends, the things that we put on TikTok and Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. Here's one that took off recently. So wherever you are in life's journey, the wilderness journey, or your own spiritual journey, remember there's always room for God's grace to move so that what is old can become new. Thank you for helping to shape us as you share what we do, contribute your thoughts and ideas, and together we live into this relationship that we have with each other and with God. If you are planning to join us in person, please know that you will be very welcome, but we would ask that if you're not feeling well, you stay home until you do feel better so that everyone who gathers in person can feel reasonably safe in this time when our health is at increased risk. By the way, you can stick around for, or fast forward to, the end of our service for announcements, opportunities to get involved, and ways that you can offer financial support to this ministry that we share. Let us take a moment to look around our community and notice that we come from many different places with diverse perspectives differing wisdom and expressions of our humanity. We are together gay, lesbian, bi, trans, queer, straight, cis, hetero, binary, non-binary, fluid, and ever-changing. We reflect the diversity and depth of God's love in creation, of God's action in the world, of God's hope for us all. We are all descended from our ancestors. Some were here before history was written, lives and spirit deeply entwined with the land. Some came looking for new life, for hope and promise. Some of us kept our promise to live together peaceably and respectfully. Many did not. Attitudes, habits, and systems have evolved that benefit some more than others. Provide some a place at the table while others are made to look on. We are Haudenosaunee, Huron-Wendat. We are Mississaugas of the Credit. We are settlers and refugees. We are disabled and diverse. We are African, Asian, European, Indigenous, and more. We are God's children with love and wisdom to share, rifts to repair, and trust to earn. And we gather to recognize each other nurture each other, and discover the love and power of God in each other and in all that we do together. This is what restores our souls and gives us hope. I come to light the Christ candle as we prepare to begin Holy Week. And I know that there are some of us who will spend, well, the whole week on Palm Sunday. Because who doesn't love a parade? 
Some of us will be celebrating and making plans for Easter weekend and joining in time with family and friends because, well, because life is good. And why wouldn't we want to celebrate that? But there are also some who will spend the week on Monday, Thursday, the Last Supper, glad to be with family and friends, but unsure about what happens next. Will we be together next year? Will I be able to participate? What does the world, the economy, my health have in store for me? What's going to happen next? There will be some of us searching for meaning this week, even as we nurture and are nurtured. And some of us will spend the week on Good Friday because we are hurting. We are doing our best to hang on, but it is so hard. The pain is real and the worry is pervasive. Some of us will spend our time in what is sometimes called Holy Saturday, that time between Good Friday and Easter, the time between struggle and deliverance, weeping and laughing. We've stopped crying, but we're not yet smiling. And we can't wait to get to the smile. We can't wait to get to the joy. We know it's coming, but could it just hurry? And some of us will arrive easily into Easter. Some of us are there now, already feeling renewed, alive, and hopeful, ready to share the joys of life and, and engage in, in hope. Some of us are ready to love and be loved. Now, many of us will go through all of the days this week, some of us will stay with one or two days. The truth is, none of us stay in any one day forever. We move from one to the other. And no day is ignored by God. No day is more faithful than any other day. No day is more authentic. The light of Christ is with us and shines through us as we cheer and as we wonder as we weep, as we wait, and as we rejoice. God is with us in all of these times. And this week is the week to be recognized and know that we are not alone in our day. Whatever day is yours in this moment, know that you will not always be in that day. But know that you are invited to let your love shine. It may not seem like much that you have to offer, but what you offer is the light of God, the light of Christ that shines through you in every day. The light of Christ, the light of Holy Week and of Easter. The light of Christ. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, and the righteous shall enter through it. This is the gate of the Lord and the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you. You have answered me and have become my salvation. 
the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And this is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And we bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. And he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God. You are my God. And I will give thanks to you. You, you are my God. And I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11, read by Jordana Wright. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafly branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve.
Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and they put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus came riding on a little donkey, 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 donkey. The children all gathered shouting, Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Rejoice, Hosanna, rejoice, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes, the son of David, blessed is he who comes, the son of David, donkey David, Jesus, donkey David, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh man, this is not right. Ah oh, well, let us pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your eyes. And God, may I never lightly presume to preach your word. And may we never lightly presume to hear your word wherever we are. For in your word is hope and abundant life. Amen. <laughs> so, I'm not where I want to be today. <laughs> That's, um, I, I'm not in my chancel. I'm not in the chancel. I, I, I've been moved. I, I, I don't have a pulpit. <sighs> there, there's something happening uh, in the chancel right now, and I have been displaced. <sighs> and so just between us, I am not happy. <sighs> there's a concert, a very large choir, and they need... Well, they need risers, and so we have to move everything out of the cha out of the chancel. My chancel. Not happy. I do not love this choir. They they are inconveniencing me. But there's not much I can do. So so let's get on with it. If I even if I just had the pulpit. So we had two different Gospels telling us the story of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem and the day we call, we call Palm Sunday. In Mark's Gospel, well, it, it had cloaks and palms and Jesus riding on a young colt and the, and the crowd shouting, Hosanna! 
Matthew's gospel has cloaks and palms and the shouting of Hosanna. In fact, they're almost identical. You wonder why we bothered to read them both. Except that Matthew has a donkey and a colt. And then when you listen, it almost sounds like Jesus is riding them both. I, I, I quote, They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. Now, much, of me, much is made of this by, by scholars. I mean, I mean, seriously, actually, scholars really do spend time on this. Most agree that Jesus uh, was not a trick rider in a circus, okay? So, so then how does, how does Matthew get it wrong? Well, some would point out that Matthew is making it clear that Jesus is fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah. And I quote, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Kind of sounds like two animals. Now, some would point out that a young donkey is a colt, so the repetition is really just for clarity. You know, like, the name is Bond, James Bond. Doesn't mean that you're meeting two spies, right? But others would point out that using the term both would suggest that there are, in fact, two animals. I know, fascinating stuff, isn't it? Still others point out that it's very common to ride on a colt and then to have the mother along to carry the packs, right? And it would be remarked that you were then riding a donkey and a colt, even though you were only on one, the others carrying the packs. Mums who go on picnics with kids will understand what this is like. <laughs> then I start to wonder what Jesus would take on a picnic, what Jesus would have in his luggage. Hmm. <laughs> But all of this actually misses the point for me. So can we just take a moment and recognize that Jesus is a remarkable equestrian? Like seriously, a great rider of horses. One, two, doesn't matter. I mean, it, he's riding a colt that has never been ridden before. It, it's got to be a lifetime ago, I think, that I went to see Monty Roberts at the York Equestrian Center. Now, Monty was the original horse whisperer, right? He had a way with horses that almost seemed, well, supernatural. And, and I had to see it for myself. So squeezed in shoulder to shoulder, I and a couple hundred other spectators held our collective breath, and we watched Monty prepare a horse to be ridden for the very first time in half an hour. Amazing. It's a long time to hold your breath, um, collective or otherwise, but not long to put a rider safely on a horse that has never been ridden before. I, I know good horse people who take a, take a month, six weeks to gentle or prepare a horse to be ridden. Monty did it in 30 minutes. And it was to all of us there, miraculous. Monty still has a, a great following and has invited thousands of people into a new way of understanding and communicating with horses. But he's got nothing on Jesus. I mean, not only did Jesus get on a horse that had never been ridden before in almost no time, but he rode that horse into a crowd of people who were shouting and waving palms and throwing cloaks on the ground in front of the, in front of the colt. I mean, when I say we held our collective breath watching Monty, I, I wasn't just describing the tension. Like, we were instructed to be quiet so as not to disturb the young horse. We didn't shout Hosanna or throw our coats at the horse or rider, not at all. We were perfectly quiet and still. Jesus is a great equestrian. And so what? Okay, great with horses. What? What? what what do we care? Well, the best horse people I have ever known, and I have been fortunate enough to know a few, have had a certain aura about them. It's a, it's a calm. Because you see, horses are basically, they're prey animals, right? They're food for others. Th they know that. They know that, and so they're always very careful. They're always on the lookout for threats. That's why the eyes are on the side of their head, so they can see what's coming at them. And a new horse or donkey doesn't know you from a mountain lion. 
except by your body language and your attitude, your aura. So if you want to approach a horse, you kind of, well, you need to change, right? You need to let go of aggression in your body language, in your breathing, in your attitude. Whenever I get to spend time with horses, I can feel my whole body relax. My pulse slows, my breathing gets easier as I get nearer and nearer to where the horses are. And when I am relaxed, that's when the horses don't worry about me. I'm not a mountain lion. They may smell meat on me, right? But I'm no longer a threat to them. There's no aggression, there's no anger. We're just relaxed. That's the way that Monty Roberts is with horses. That's the way I try to be when I am lucky enough to be with horses. And that must have been the way that Jesus was with that colt, relaxed. No threat, no aggression, no anger. Just imagine that for a minute if you could. All those people, they're yelling, they're waving, they're throwing things before Jesus and the donkey. And, and Jesus' sense of calm was enough that it actually calmed the donkey colt. Just calmed him. You ever tried to calm uh, your cat when another cat comes into the yard? Or, or a dog when a squirrel's around? It's not easy, but Jesus did it. And the more I think of it, the more amazing it is to me. No anger, just peace, calm, relaxed. The more I think about it, the more tense and angry I get, actually. Because you see, I know the rest of the story, right? Here are these people and they're shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Everybody loves a parade. But the very next day, they're gonna turn. In almost no time at all, this crowd will despise Jesus siding with those who will put him on a cross and watch him die. And that angers me. It, it, it saddens me. It, it can almost ruin Palm Sunday for me. I mean, here we are waving palms, yeah. And the next time that most of us will connect, it'll be Good Friday. It's hard knowing the story, knowing what comes next. But just as I know what comes next, just as we know what comes next, so does Jesus. He's been telling his disciples, he's been telling the apostles, this is what's going to come next. He knew that the crowds would turn. He may or may not have known that the crowds would petition for Barabbas's release, but, but he knew full well they wouldn't ask for him. And still he takes the cheers. Wow. He knew that his supporters would flee. And still he enjoys the parade. He knew the cheers would turn to boos. He still accepts their joy and their frenzied excitement with enough calm that he could actually quiet the colt upon which he's riding. Oh my God. If it had been me, I think I would have had a few things to say to the crowds. If it had been me, I wouldn't even be there. But if I was, as the crowd gave me their palms, I might have a, another gesture that I offered them. If it had been me, I sure would not have been able to sit on a donkey. Certainly not one that had never been ridden before. My anger and my upset, my, my fear, my anxiety. Uh, the colt would have thrown me off and bolted for sure, no question. But Jesus rode right into Jerusalem, smiling, waving, I imagine, accepting their hosannas and sharing in their joy. <sighs> How? How? Well, I think that Jesus knew the crowd for who they were and loved them anyway. He knew the crowds. 
He knew that all crowds are fickle and that people can be weak. And he loved them anyhow. He didn't expect them to be other than they were. He loved them exactly as they were. Not because they were attractive. Because let's face it, we are not attractive in big crowds. We're not an attractive mob. I'm not even sure that we're all that attractive individually. But Jesus loved them because he chose to. Jesus loves us because he chooses to. Jesus went through trial and crucifixion for them, for us. Not because we deserve it, but because he loves us. Because God loves us. And you go, okay, great, good, good, good for Jesus. But what does that have to do with us? Well, can we talk about people who make us crazy for a minute? Just, just for a minute. You know, people who give you advice when you don't want it. Didn't ask for it, don't need it. You know, your Uncle Gib, who can't mind his own business, right? But he just, oh man, he just needs to be so critical about every little thing. But, but you love your Uncle Gib, don't you? Your neighbor, Amancia, who's always welcoming stray animals into her home and into her yard. And so there are cats and raccoons and animals that make noises at night, take things from your garden, leave things in your garden. But it's just the way that she loves everything and she doesn't want any creature to suffer or even struggle. And she makes the best coconut cake and she brought soup to you every day when you were sick. Maybe there are some people that we just need to love the way that they are and let go of the things that make us crazy. They're not perfect but they're lovable because we choose to love them. Maybe we should focus on that. Hey, it's not condoning. You know, it's not, it's not giving in. It's simply recognizing that, that some people are just the way that they are. And getting upset about it doesn't change anything. It just makes you miserable. And then, and then you can't enjoy the party or the parade. Jesus enjoyed the parade. Right there in the middle of the gospel today, two versions. He sat that young donkey and he smiled at the crowds, even though he knew they were weak and would do the wrong thing tomorrow. He still enjoyed the party that day. <laughs> Remember that old Etta James song? Sunday kind of love, a love to last past Saturday night. Well, you know what? What we're looking for, I think, is a, is a Palm Sunday kind of love. The kind that lets you enjoy the moment without worrying about how people aren't living up to your expectations. It's not about giving up. It's about letting up. You know how your brother never appreciates what you go through? And always goes, always going on and on about his job like anybody cares? Well, that's who he is. So love him because you choose to. Because you know what? He's not going to change just because it makes you crazy. I mean, he may change, but not because of the sleep that you lose, not because of the way you grind your teeth. Let go of, of the expectations and try a Palm Sunday kind of love. Just love him. Just love him because, you know, he's the guy who showed up to help you move. And he was the only one who could handle that really heavy fold-out couch. <laughs> and he phones you for your birthday every year. <laughs> We've all got people who have let us down. Some who do it far too often but we love them. And in our love, we, we may expect them to be better, but they aren't going to be. They're gonna be who they are. Jesus wanted the crowd to be better, absolutely. He wanted them to understand his love. He wanted them to, to, to understand God's presence in that moment. 
He wanted them to shout for his release, but he knew they weren't likely to. And still he paraded, still he waved, still he loved them. And I marvel at that. I want that. So you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna draw a palm leaf on my hand. Maybe one day I'll even get a, a tattoo, I don't know. Just remind me of the importance of a Palm Sunday kind of love. Hey, listen, you don't have to mark your body. You can draw one on, on a piece of paper. You, you can cut out one out of paper. You can put it in your house somewhere. And then and just look at it. And remember a Palm Sunday kind of love. A love that's not diminished by disappointment or contingent on expectation. A love that allows you to enjoy the parade. When work is getting to you, when that person on the Zoom call is making you glad that you're not in person, look at the palm. <laughs> Smile at your computer. Smile as your neighbor reminds you how to manage your relationships. You know, raise your kids, park your car, again, completely uninvited. Let it inspire in you a Palm Sunday kind of love. So when you get shoved out of your familiar routine, you know, by people who don't realize how important you are, stuck in a little room instead of in your chancel, then, then just look at the palm. And remember what an amazing choir they are. And how many people are gonna be delighted by their concerts. And how you'll probably go and enjoy it too. And then maybe, just maybe, let that Palm Sunday Love guides you. <laughs> Who, me? No, 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 I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you. <laughs> but you know what? As you get good at it, this Palm Sunday kind of love, well, then maybe, just maybe try turning it on yourself. Yeah, this Palm Sunday kind of love. You know how you, you just never seem to be able to live up to all the expectations of others? You don't know what you're supposed to say or feel about the war in Gaza. You haven't kept up on all the binge-worthy TV shows. You didn't see any of the movies nominated for the Academy Awards. You get cranky when people change things on you. You make mistakes in relationships, not because you mean to. It's just, well, it's hard sometimes to get it right. Try a Palm Sunday kind of love and accept that you're human. You make mistakes, sometimes big ones, but more often little ones. Accept yourself. You don't have to keep up to matter in the world. You don't have to be an expert to love. Just be who you are and realize that just as Jesus loved the crowds on Palm Sunday, even with their flaws, Jesus loves you. God loves you just the same. Doesn't mean you can't change. But for now, start by loving yourself as you are. And enjoy the parade. Enjoy the parade while you can. Because let's face it, parades don't happen every day. No. So enjoy your parents and your children, your brothers, your sisters, your neighbors and friends. Watch Barbie, even if you don't get it. And if you find all of it too daunting, which can happen, just picture Jesus sitting on that donkey, waving at the folks, and try a Palm Sunday kind of love. He'll carry you all the way to Jerusalem, all the way through Good Friday and into Easter Sunday. I have that on very good authority. I heard it in the gospel. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. It is Palm Sunday and we pray. We pray in celebration and in concern, in worry and in confidence, in love and in trust as we shout Hosanna on Palm Sunday, let us remember 
that it means save us. God, we give thanks for the joys of this life, the opportunity to reach out to others, the moments when others have reached out to us and changed, well, changed the moment, changed the forecast, changed our lives. We thank you for the gift of relationship. But save us, God, from taking them for granted. We give thanks for our comforts, food in the cupboard, warm clothes for now, other clothes for the next season. We give thanks for a little bit of money in our hands and maybe a little bit in the bank. But Hosanna, save us. Save us from being too fixated on money and comforts, security that is not real, and possessions that come to possess us. God, we pray for family and friends, those who are hurting and struggling. We try to love and to support, but our resources only go so far. God, please be with our family and friends as they engage in their struggles and let them know that they are not alone. Hosanna. God, save us from being concerned only with our friends, our family, our tribe, our side. Let us pray for those that we do not know. And even more, let us pray for those who oppose us, whose opinions and agendas are not aligned with ours. God, help us to see you in them and help us make their welfare our concern. Oh God, we pray for ourselves. It is hard. It is hard when we hurt. Hard when we care. Hard when loved ones suffer and their comfort is beyond our ability. We pray for strength and hope when we want to give up, for guidance when we're lost, and grace when we fall short of our goals, our aspirations, or our promises. Hosanna. God, save us from taking ourselves too seriously and forgetting that you love us and are always there if we but listen with our hearts and strive with our souls. Hosanna, God. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who leads the parade and taught us to pray with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Go forth from this moment, out into the world and practice a Palm Sunday kind of love. Love the world for the way the world is. Love the people in the world for the way that they are. And love yourself with all of your flaws and mistakes, your gifts and your blessings. And know that God the Creator loves you. Know that Jesus is very happy to parade with us. And know that the Holy Spirit absolutely surrounds and fills each and every one of us, making it possible for us to have a Palm Sunday kind of love. Until we gather again virtually or in person, amen.
We are worshiped together, so let's see what happens next. Here is some of what's going on in your community. This is a big week. It's Holy Week. Thursday is Monday Thursday, a remembrance of the Last Supper. And so we gather informally, and those who want to will participate in foot or hand washing. And then for dinner, we gather at one long table and share a simple informal meal. This year, there'll be chicken kebabs and pork kebabs, as well as falafel, pita, and salad. And as we eat, we will remember together the story of Easter and imagine what our meal might mean symbolically. We will share communion, and the whole thing will probably take about 90 minutes. There will likely be between 75 and 100 people attending, and it would be helpful to know if you might be in that number, so that we can prepare enough food for everyone. If you haven't already signed up, you can email me at nclie at jubileeunited.ca and let me know that you're coming and if anyone's coming with you. I will be shopping on Monday, so please don't delay. But if you forget to let me know, don't worry about it. Come anyway. I always overbuy. On Good Friday, there'll be a digital service available from 10.30 a.m. and an in-person service also at 10.30 a.m. It will be a service of music, word, and reflection focusing on the story and the meaning of the crucifixion. 
And then on Easter Sunday, we will have a sunrise service in person out on the labyrinth at 8 a.m. Informal music, communion, and stories of resurrection. For many of us, it's actually the highlight of the season. And then at 9 a.m., there is an Easter breakfast in the auditorium. At 10.30 a.m., the choir, the community, the ministers all join in to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. All the bells and whistles online and in person at 10.30 a.m. And once Holy Week is over, well, there are still things happening. The Home Safe Lecture Series for those who like to feel safer and more comfortable in their homes will continue in April with talks on April 10th, 17th, and 24th. Those are Wednesdays. There are a variety of wonderful speakers to help you with crime prevention and downsizing, caring for family at home, aging well in place, and support for caregivers. The lectures are free, and there will even be tea and coffee served before the lecture. So please join us and tell your friends. On Sunday, April 21st, we will hold our first worship service as an amalgamated congregation with the folks of Forest Grove United Church officially becoming members of Jubilee United Church. And together we will share and create community, ministry, and God's love for the world. So please plan to join us for this very special service as we start it all. Don't forget that Jubilee is open for prayer, indoor labyrinth walks, and just spending time with a minister every Tuesday from 2 to 4 p.m. We call it Open Doors. And as usual, I'm looking for limericks and pictures. Maybe you'd like to share Easter with us. You know, before and during, like Easter eggs and Easter bonnets, anything Eastery we'd love to share in next week's service and the week after. Limericks, pictures, I'd love to include your pictures and poetry in our worship. I also love pictures of babies. And as you've noticed, we've had a couple of celebrations in the past two weeks, which have been an absolute joy to share. But you know what? I'm still going to include pictures of my granddaughter. And so we conclude with thanks for your financial support. We need it. It doesn't just support what we do, it inspires us to dream. Dream of new ways to connect with community and share God's love. New ways to create a place where people can share their faith even as they grow in faith and experience community that includes and values differing people and perspectives. Your financial contributions through PAR, that's pre-authorized remittance, check, e-transfer to admin at jubileunited.ca, through canadahelps.org, or shared in person on Sunday, support, guide, and inspire all that we do. You really do shape our ministry as together we respond to God's call to grow in faith and love our neighbors. And it's your actions and other gifts that turn financial support into community. It's your kindness and your participation your wisdom, your patience, your openness, your willingness to risk, your sense of justice and practice of love to make Jubilee what it is to so many people, a home for all of God's children, including you. Thank you for making Jubilee home.